In my previous video, where we were talking about how to make a frequency distribution in histogram in Excel, I ended up making something like this. And let me actually make one little tiny change here before we get going. Let me outline these bars. So right click and outline, just, just have a little, little slight outline so we can tell the bars apart. We ended up with something like this where we labeled the bins at the bottom in the center of each of the bars of the histogram. And we did that by typing these labels over here and having the graph put them on the bottom. Uh, Berkey Academy viewer asked me if there was a way to put the end numbers for the bins on the left and the right of each bar. And they're talking about something kind of like this. This is a histogram that I made in a program called R. And typically when you make a histogram, you don't have a number range sitting in the middle of a bin. You just label the ends of the bins. And so what this viewer had in mind was having 0, 10, 20, 30, 40, something like this. And most statistics programs have no problems doing this. However, Excel does have a problem doing this. The question is, can it be done? Yes. However, it is a very crazy process to do. Let me show you how to do it, okay? If you're interested. Now, you're going to have to pay attention. You're probably going to have to take notes if you want this to work correctly at home. But let me go through and basically what we have to do is we have to trick Excel into doing this. Excel does not want to do this for us. So let me show you how you trick it. And it's going to seem like a very, very strange sequence of things we're doing. And yeah, it's strange. So let's just go ahead and get started. What we have to do to get started is... In this case, what we want to do is we want to put the number 10 here and 15, 20, 25, 30, all the way up to put 50 on this end over here, right? So what we have to do is we have to create another data set that we're going to graph along with the data we already have graphed. It's strange, but this is what we have to do. So what I did is I created some a list of numbers here, and these are these endpoints of the bins that we want. So we're starting at 10 and going up to 50 by fives. We have to create that. Now, there are several methods people talk about on the internet to do this. The, the method I'm going to suggest is let's just create some made up numbers here, all 10s, uh, for the actual data that's going to be graphed. So these are the limits, and this is the data we're going to graph. So let's add this data to this graph. Here's the easiest way to do that. Highlight the data and copy it. We can right click and hit copy. Now click on the graph and then to add it to the graph, go up here to the top left, go to home, paste, and to go down to where it says paste special. So this says, how do you want to paste this data into the graph? New series, columns, and then we want to click this little box that says category X labels in first column. Hit OK. Now what this does is it creates something we don't want, but look, this is just one of the steps. Second thing let's do, let's click on the red bars, this new made up data, right click, and let's click change ser series chart type. And here for red series two, now it's a clustered column. Let's change that to a line graph. And we need to add this checkbox here for secondary axis. Okay, now let's see what we have. We have a line here with all those tens, but the tens are just displayed on the secondary axis, the secondary Y axis here on the right. Very weird, I know. Okay, now the next thing we need to do is we need to add a secondary x-axis. So now we have two y-axes. We have one, uh, one x-axis set of labels. We need to add a secondary label. So here we go and we click design. 
go to add chart element axes and secondary horizontal and see what it's doing here is it's putting this extra axis on the top yeah guys I know this is weird but this is how you have to, you have to trick Excel into this okay now the next step we want to bring this axis on top. This is actually the axis we're going to eventually use to label the x-axis. We want to bring it down and not have it on the top here. So we want to go to the right, the secondary y-axis, right click, format axis, and see now it's it has that axis up top at the maximum axis value. We want to bring it down, click axis value, zero type zero there hit enter and see that brings that axis down to the bottom now the next step and I'm not really clear why you have to do this I'm actually not clear why you have to do any of this but what we have we want to go over to the left y-axis the main y-axis is as, as Excel thinks about it right click on it go to format axis we're kind of doing the opposite that we just did before okay go over here and we want to move this other x-axis with the, the old one 10 to 14 15 to, to 19 we want to add that to the roof we have to move it up there so cl uh, click here maximum axis value and that's going to move it up top now it also creates the unfortunate side effect that it flips our uh, flips our hip histogram kind of upside down and backwards here very weird so how can we get rid of that we need to delete this axis that we were just messing with, this primary vertical axis. Go over here, right click again, and delete it. And watch carefully what happens. Two things happen. Number one, it flips our histogram back right side up, and it changes this axis over on the right side to where those numbers were going from like 0 to 12. Now they're going to 0 to 70 again very weird we're almost done guys now next thing let's do is let's go down to this axis that has the numbers we want but they're not in the places that we want right so we want to shift them over to the left so right click on this axis go to format axis and what we want to do is move these numbers on the tick marks so axis position on tick marks and look at that the numbers are lined up exactly where we want now. Okay, now we just have a couple of additional things we need to do to complete this. We need to get rid of this axis that's floating in, uh, in the top here, and we need to get rid of this red line. Now the easiest ways to do this are just to turn them invisible. If you actually try deleting them, this can mess up everything that we just did. So. Go up here and click on this top axis, and we've got the numbers on the uh, horizontal secondary axis selected. And while we've got those selected, go up here to um, Home and click on the font color, and let's change it to white. And now we can't see that axis anymore, and hey, it's not bothering me. Is it bothering you? And the last thing we need to do here is get rid of this red line, and we're going to use a similar trick. Click on the red line, left click, right click, format data series, and over here we just want to turn it into no color. So click the little fill and line bucket, click no line, and now it's gone. I guess the last thing we want to do is we want to move this axis over to the other side, right? Our last little trick here is to move the y-axis over to the right side, right-click on the x-axis, format axis, and over here it says vertical axis crosses at, now it says maximum category, click at category number 1, and hit enter, and that switches it over to the left-hand side. Now, of course, as with any graph, you're going to want to have put a good title, you're going to want to label the y-axis with frequency, and you're going to want to label the x-axis with, say, bins or categories or something like that. 
but that is the easiest way I have been able to figure out how to create a histogram that labels the little bin cutoffs or bin dividers down here in the way that you were asking about. So that's all I have for this one. If you have any comments or questions, or if you have a better, easier way to do this, please let me know in the comment section below. Otherwise, this is Dr. Berkey signing out. Talk to you later.